Hello and welcome to a new series on my channel called How It Was Created, the show where I tell you how things were created. Shocking, I know. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about one of science fiction's most iconic villains, the Daleks. The clunky pepper pots we all love to hate. But how did these toilet unblocking villains come to be? Let's find out. In order to understand how the Daleks were created, we first need to understand what they were created for, obviously. In the early 1960s, Sidney Newman, the head of drama at the BBC, was looking for a family show to fill a gap in the evening. He decided upon a science fiction show featuring a group of people that would travel about space and time, getting into scrapes, with the central protagonist being an older man. While learning about historical events and scientific concepts, he hired Verity Lambert to produce the show, but the one proviso he had was no BEMs. Now what was a BEM, you may ask? Well, it stands for Bug-Eyed Monsters, as he believed science fiction should be more serious rather than silly. However, despite this, Verity Lambert commissioned a story written by Terry Nation, featuring mutants that retreated into a metal case due to being at war with another race, the Thals. And it was Raymond Cusick who took this concept and created the design we know and love around it. But how did he do this? Well, during lunch at the BBC cafeteria, he began sketching potential designs on the back of a napkin, and he used the pepper pot to show his colleagues how the Dalek should move, as he wanted them to have no visible wheels, and he wanted them to glide along the floor. Cusick originally envisioned the Daleks to have an antennae and multiple moving parts, however there was a slight issue. He only had 60 pounds to work with on each Dalek which meant he had to resort to using more mundane objects, such as an egg whisk and, most famously, a plunger. Of course, the Daleks weren't just mutants inside a metal shell that wanted to kill just for the sake of it. Oh no. The Daleks were heavily inspired by the fascist regimes of the Nazis, as the Daleks believed themselves to be superior, just as the Nazis did. In addition, the Daleks' most iconic catchphrase, exterminate, was based off of such terms used by the Nazis. So in essence, the Daleks acted as a reminder of how terrible fascist regimes were in a post-World War II world, where the Nazis had become a joke in the eyes of the public. Oh, honey, I'm home! <laughs> What did I do now? Oh, tonight you were making schnitzel. What a jerk. You must be real mad at me, honey. I'm a very, very bad Hitler. <laughs> Come here, baby. Don't touch me. You've been late for your dinner every night this week. Ava, babe, please. I'm the Fuhrer. <laughs> I'm a busy man. I can't just walk off the job at five o'clock. When Sidney Newman found out about the Daleks, though, he wasn't pleased as the Daleks were the very definition of bug-eyed monsters, with a giant eye stalk in the centre of their dome-like heads. However, Verity assured the pessimistic Sidney Newman that the Daleks were more than just monsters, and that what they represent is important. Reluctantly, Sidney agreed, and the episode The Daleks aired on the 21st of December 1963, to an audience of 10 million viewers, <coughs> making Doctor Who and, by extension, The Daleks' household names and securing a steady income for Terry Nation, who owned the rights to the Daleks, as well as spawning countless products, such as toys, costumes, and even a song by, by the Go-Go's called I'm Gonna Spend My Christmas With a Dalek. I'm gonna spend my Christmas with a Dalek And hug him underneath the mistletoe And if he's very nice, I'll feed him sugar spice And hang a Christmas stocking from his big left toe and that's how the Daleks were created. Personally, I think the simplicity of the Daleks' design is what helped them become so iconic, as they were easily imitatable by children in playgrounds and even toy manufacturers, I suppose. Fun fact, the word Dalek 
has become so iconic to us Brits that it was added to the English Dictionary along, along with Sonic Screwdriver and TARDIS. Now that's what I call staying power. Anyway guys, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, be sure to like the video, comment below your thoughts, and subscribe for more videos like this, as well as podcasts, live streams, and all the rest. But the most important thing you can do is have a good day.